EQ is the first tool that you need to learn if you want to get a professional vocal mix. Just listen to these vocals before and after EQ. Every time say that we both agree that we've got an understanding set that look when you leave. Every time say that we both agree that we've got an understanding set that look when you leave. Now, unfortunately, I can't just give you an EQ preset that's gonna make every vocal and every song sound professional. If I could, I'd be the most famous YouTuber in the music production space. There's just too much variability in the human voice, in the microphone, in the sound of the microphone in the room, in the song, in the key of the song, that all impact what EQ moves need to be made. But what I can give you is just five simple vocal EQ zones, and all you need to do is determine at each zone if and how much you wanna boost or cut. That's it, makes vocal EQ much, much simpler. Now, if you don't wanna take notes or write these down or come back to this video in the future, I've also put them into a downloadable guide that's completely free, that also has the other five steps to a professional vocal mix. It's completely free from link in the description below, so be sure to pick it up. But let's go and jump into Logic. And by the way, stick around till the end and I'll show you a little trick to get a really high fidelity vocal sound if that's what you're looking for. Okay, so the first zone that you need to pay attention to is the rumble zone. Sounds ridiculous, but this is where there's just gonna be rumble in the vocal. So down here from 20 hertz up to 150 hertz on the high end is just rumble. Check it out on this vocal here. Every time say that See that we down there? If I really exaggerate it. That we've got an understanding except that look when you leave. It's just like sound from her, the air from her vocal. It's not really adding anything to this vocal and it's just gonna get in the way of other things that need that space. So the first and only EQ move that I do on every vocal is a high pass filter, cutting up until I start to impact the sound of the vocal and then scaling it back a little bit. So on the high end, it's usually around 150 hertz. Sometimes it's lower if it's a really low pitched voice. But on this vocal, I think I can get a little bit higher. But listen to it as I start to get too high and how it starts to cut into the vocal a little bit. Every time say that we both So it's really thin it out. It's a cool sound, but not what I'm going for in this mix. So somewhere around here sounds like it's still Every letting it all cut through. So I think around 160 hertz feels like the right place for me for this high pass filter. Okay, the second zone is the body zone. This is where you get fullness out of your vocal. And some vocals, depending on how they were recorded, need a little bit of a boost in this area. Some actually need to be cut a little bit this area. If it feels like it's way too muddy, way too full, then you might want to cut here. When there's too much of it, it sounds something like this. Every time say that we both agree. And when there's not enough, it sounds something like this. So I actually think on this vocal, I like the feel of it as it currently is in terms of the body. It feels very full, but it's not overpowering. So I'm gonna leave it at least for now. Now, the third zone is where we start to get into boxy and muddy frequencies. And this is anywhere from 200 Hertz up to about 800 Hertz. So if we have too much in the zone, it sounds something like this. Every time say that we both agree. It's kind of cheap. If we have way too little, then it sounds something like this. Every time say the we Again, both thin. agree. Again, thin. If you move it a little bit higher, it starts to feel a little scooped, a little bit unnatural. But if we listen to this vocal here, Every time say the we both agree. It does have a little bit of that cheap boxy sound. So I do want to cut a little bit of that. So what we want to do is between 200 and 800 hertz, just sweep and find where it sounds the worst and then do a bit of a cut. Every time say that we both agree so to that me, we've got an understanding right around 600 hertz. That look when you so I'm gonna leave. cut right around there, maybe make it a little bit narrower. Every time say that we both agree that and we've if I got add that back an in, understanding set that look when you leave. A little bit cleaner. So this is probably the number one place that I think I notice in amateur mixes their vocals just feeling really amateur is too much in this 200 to 800 hertz range. So be sure to pay attention here. Too little, it starts to sound too thin, but too much and it sounds really, really cheap, especially in the like four to 800 range in particular. That's where it's really, really boxy. Okay, the next area is the presence range and this is from 1K up to about 4K. Now, too much of this is gonna sound kind of harsh and fatiguing, something like this. Every time say that we both agree. A little bit telephony. That we've gotten. Too little is gonna sound like this. 
Every time say that it's hard to make out what she's saying. Agree. This is where we get the intelligibility of the vocal, so where we can make out what the vocalist is actually saying. So we want to have a good amount of this. This is also where it's going to cut through in the mix in most cases. So let's go ahead and put that back up to where it was. And if you're going to do a boost in this area, which I think this vocal could use, do it in the context of the mix. Listen, boosting around and sweeping in the context of the mix for where it sounds best with everything else. So that's what we're going to do here. Let's go and listen with the song. Every time say that we both agree That we've got an understanding Except that look when you leave So I think there's kind of two cool areas in this range. The first is around 1.5. So I'm going to do a boost around here. Every time say that we both agree there. That we've got an understanding A little bit, smaller, that a little bit narrower. And let's go and do the same thing right around 3k. Let's go and make this narrower. Every time say that we both agree that we've got an understanding set that look when you leave. Now, with EQ, each of these is a volume boost at those specific frequencies. So you need to pay attention. If you're doing a lot of boosts, you're going to be adding a little bit of volume. And then when you check if you like what you're doing with your EQ by turning it off and on, you might just like it better because you've actually made it louder. So you also want to turn it down on your output gain over here if you're doing too many boosts. If you're doing too many cuts, you might actually need to add a little bit of volume. But here we just want to turn it down just a little bit to make sure that we're offsetting these boosts that we're doing. So without these EQ moves, it sounds like... Like this Every time say that we both agree and with them it sounds like that this. we've got an understanding much clearer much more present but there's still one more EQ zone that you should pay attention to and that's from 8k and above this is the air frequency range this is where you get a really high fidelity sound now this isn't the trick that I'm going to show you stick around for that that's in just a minute but this is anywhere from 8k and above but really quickly if you're liking this video so far and you think it would be helpful to someone else could you be sure to like it it's really helpful to the you YouTube algorithm just to know that it's actually helpful to people. So be sure to like it. Let's go and be get back into it. So anywhere here, 8K and above, if I boost it really extreme, it sounds like this. Every time say that we both agree. It's a little bit too much. It's kind of thin, kind of papery, but you really hear the air in the vocal. So this can be really, really nice if you want your vocal to just sound really upfront, close and present. Now, with a pop song, this is very, very important. With a kind of alt rock song like this, it's a little... 50 50 but with this vocal i really want to have it sounding a little bit airy so every time let's find in the context of the mix where it feels good that we've got an understanding set that look when you leave around 9k sounds good to me so i'll dive it back a little bit every time say that we both agree that we've got an understanding cool. so that sounds good to me now real quick side note if you want to have Kind of a more lo-fi sound cutting out up here can sound really good if you listen to that in solo every time because it's kind of that lo-fi sound but i like it with that extra air so we'll go ahead and put it back and it sounds every like this. time say that we both agree. okay now for that high fidelity trick in logic i love to use their vintage tube eq under the vintage eq collection this is really, really great. Just has a very musical high end. So with this EQ, it may look confusing, but all you need to know is that this knob right here is how much you're boosting in the high frequencies. And this knob right here is the exact frequency that it's boosting. And then the bandwidth here, I encourage you to set somewhere between five and higher. Basically, it's just gonna be how wide is that EQ move. With these really high fidelity moves, I find wider just sounds a little bit better. So what I like to do is set it around 8K and then just boost really extreme and then find the frequency and then dial it back and mix it up until I'm noticing it and it feels right in the context of the song. So let's listen to it and find the frequency. Every time say that we both agree that we've got an understanding set that look when you leave. I think around 11k Every sounds good around here. Say that we so we'll take it all the way out. That we've got an understanding set that look when you leave. Okay, and that's working for me, and I'm just going to scale the output volume down just a little bit. And then let's listen to this vocal with and without the CQ. Every time say so that we both agree that we've and got with. an understanding set that look when you leave. 
huge improvement, right? Now, real quick, let's just look at how I've set it on this backing vocal here. So here, as a backing vocal, I don't want it to cut through quite as much, so I'm not doing any sort of presence boosting, any sort of air. I'm just cutting out some of the stuff that was making it feel a little bit too full, a little bit too muddy. I want it to be a thinner backing vocal. So sometimes I might even cut some of these high frequencies. Sometimes I might cut the high pass filter even higher. In this case, I felt like just cutting a little bit of that was the right move. Okay, so those are our six zones. We have the low rumble up to about 150 hertz. We have the body between 100 and 400 hertz. We have the muddy boxy frequencies between 200 and 800 hertz. We have the presence between 1K and 4K. And then we have the bright airy frequencies from 8K and above. Now, again, if you don't have that pro vocal checklist, be sure to download it. It has all these frequencies listed out and the other five steps that we're doing in this series to create a pro vocal mix inside Logic. It's completely free, so be sure to grab it. Before you go, I'd love to hear from you. Is this similar to how you've been EQing your vocals? Let me know in the comments. If this video was helpful. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next week with another video. One thing